have I got news for you? I'm Victoria Corin Mitchell in the news this week. During lunchtime drinks at the Conservative Party conference, Therese Coffey attempts to dispel the myth that the government couldn't organise a piss-up in a brewery. <laughs> Emmanuel Macron saves himself at the 11th hour after realising that Camilla had a packet of scampi fries on the train to Paris. <laughs> <laughs> and in Stockport, the man who's been putting dog excrement through Angela Rayner's letterbox is caught on camera. <laughs> Ian's team tonight is a comedian who describes himself as Spain's best export. And with post-Brexit import fees, we were lucky to afford him. Please welcome <laughs> Ignacio Lopez. <laughs> On Paul's team tonight is a writer and broadcaster who has a pilot's licence and is aiming to one day fly solo around the world. Sounds tough, but it's easier than getting from Birmingham to Manchester by train. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome Carol Vorderman. <laughs> We begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Ian and Ignacio have a look at this. Oh, yes. Hi, I'm Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am. That's yeah. the <laughs> annual handing out contracts to Mates Festival. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next Prime Minister. God. <laughs> That's where they want to take us back to. <laughs> and no one will sit next to her. <laughs> I think that seat was reserved for a head of lettuce. <laughs> Where do you want to start? Well, why don't we start with the warm-up for the Prime Minister? Do you see that? He was warmed up by his wife? Yes, usually you're introduced by a colleague or a friend, but that's obviously not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> this time, Rishi decided he'd get his wife to come on, and she came on and said, he's a really good bloke, he's decent, he's honourable, and you thought, this is the Conservative Party, this isn't going to work. <laughs> Should have come on and said, look, he's a pathological liar, he's completely economically illiterate. Vote for him and they'd have been screaming <laughs> on their feet. She did actually describe him as my best friend. Oh. Yeah, she said we're one team, which will interest the um, revenue. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the big announcement that he had to make? That he's still Prime Minister <laughs> <laughs> one year on. The, the big thing they're going to do, or perhaps not going to do... Is it uh, something to do with HS2, by any chance? Yeah? Yeah. Because they're following on their policy, stop the boats and also the trains. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing, though. They went to Manchester to announce that they're not going to take the high-speed train to Manchester. I mean, the, the implication, presumably, well, we've been here now, we won't need to... <laughs> to is there anything good to be said about that decision? I think it's quite a good decision. I mean, for years we've been saying this isn't a colossal waste of money. It's staggering, the mismanagement. It is a colossal failure in cost management, so I'm quite happy to, to scrap the lot. What, the Conservative Party? <laughs> <laughs> They sort of announced, OK, we're not going to do this. We said we were going to do it, but we're not going to do it. But here's a whole bunch of schemes that we are going to do. But then so many of the schemes that they announced on the Wednesday we found already exist, like extending the tram system in Manchester to Manchester Airport, which actually opened in 2014. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit safer, isn't it, announcing things that have already happened? <laughs> <laughs> They're not even sure that it will reach London. No. So they might not get to Euston, you'll have to sort of <laughs> speed from Birmingham and get up and walk the last four miles. <laughs> <laughs> it's a £36 billion pound saving, apparently. Yes. They said, we'll extend the West Midlands Metro, we'll build the Leeds tram, yeah. electrify the North Wales main line, upgrade the A1, A2, A5, M6 and the A75, which point someone shouted, house. <laughs> <laughs> he was desperately trying to do politics, which isn't really Sunak's strength. <laughs> <laughs> which was to try and save the big announcement for himself, which meant that he had to spend three days effectively lying. Well, the Sun newspaper, for some reason, described the high-speed rail link as the woke HS2. <laughs> <laughs> so, I thought we might play a game of woke, broke or having a smoke. <laughs> <laughs> You 
you serious about this? Oh, yes. <laughs> Here's the first one. OK. <laughs> it's science. It's the concept of science. Well, it's broke. No, it's woke. Oh, this was a fringe meeting about whether the Earth was flat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, science, woke, blob, libtard, left. <laughs> <laughs> Something. Do you know, if somebody invented a robot that looked like Ian, it would behave like that. <laughs> Let's try another one. What's this? Going for smoke. Smoke meat. <laughs> <laughs> it's not smoke. Is it veganism? And what would that be, do you think? Well, that's woke as heck, isn't it? I mean... <laughs> this is fake meat. Oh, right. Have you heard about this? Here's some actual fake meat. And what's wrong with yeah. fake meat, do you think? I'm sure I've seen British people floating on these in Spain and Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> this is the tax on meat, is that right? Whose policy is that? Well, it's like all these things. They're not saying there's going to be a tax on meat. That was just made up. Shall we have a look at Claire Coutinho, this uh. season's energy secretary, talking about it on Sky News? You said, it's no wonder Labour seems so relaxed about taxing meat. So Keir Starmer doesn't eat it, and Ed Miliband is clearly scarred by his encounter with a bacon sandwich. Did you write... You didn't write that, did you? I did actually write that. I think, you know, it's good to have a, a, a light moment in your speech as well. But the point yeah, is actually... Not proposing a meat tax. The point is actually I very serious. So some of the things that Labour are proposing are incredibly hard for working families. What's so whether you, have, whether you have things What's like... meat tax? That's what you're saying here. Well, so the point is... They are proposing things which are pushing families too hard. So you've got things like the ULES tax That's uh, expansion, tax. which does cost families £12.50 a day. That's meat tax, though, is it? But that is very difficult. And they've got things like proposing that you would decarbonise the electricity grid by 2030 again, which would result in very difficult choices also for families. Meat tax. Genuinely, there is a meat tax. It does seem the Conservatives constantly leave a massive open goal and Keir Starmer's just kind of behind it, vaping and playing Wordle. <laughs> <laughs> but that's Labour's main policy. We're not Conservatives. Yeah. It's quite... quite it's a great really. policy, <laughs> OK. <laughs> How did Michael Gove compare Keir Starmer to Tony Blair? <laughs> what was he saying was the main difference? Their names? <laughs> No, Michael Gove said, there are some politicians who are accused of being all sizzle, no steak. Blair was definitely steak, and Keir is just corn mush. <laughs> they are just... <laughs> Next week, of course, the Labour Conference. Yeah. Already, yes. organisers in Liverpool are preparing the auditorium for Keir Starmer's speech. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to see Michael Gove jogging? No. No, we Same say no. Words. But it's part of the quiz, cos I want to know, is he woke, broke or having a smoke? Oh, Let's uh, have a look. Okay. Come on in. <laughs> oh. I think the answer is he's having a stroke. <laughs> Lord above. I don't know what he's got in his left-hand well, pocket, but he ought to see a doctor about that. <laughs> Pointing the way to Chichester. I'm sure I read somewhere that he was caught having a fag on the balcony in the hotel and it wasn't allowed or something. Exactly right. Oh, so, yes! Go ahead. having a smoke. <laughs> How is smoking going to get more difficult for young people? Because they're going to start banning people from buying cigarettes when they're 14 and they'll increase it every year. Well, I think that's the plan, is it? The idea is not to be too cruel to people that smoke already. Mm. They'll raise the smoking age every year so you're sort of chasing it and people that are 14 will never get... They haven't said if they're going to do the same with the pension age. <laughs> it was also noted that he hadn't banned vaping and it's nothing to do with the £300,000 donation to the Tory party from someone who has a vaping <laughs> company. Nothing to do with that at all. What, are you saying that the cigarette companies haven't given them more? <laughs> That's Good pretty point. shocking. It is. <laughs> What was Michael Gove most excited about, though, at the conference? Oh, uh, was it the clubs in Manchester? Close. It's certainly about the nights out and the party spirit. Let's have a look. If you're putting together your conference diary, there is one date you won't want to miss. Tuesday evening, 9pm, B at 1, Deansgate. It's the LGBT plus Conservatives' final night of conference party. We all know what the final night of conference can be like. It will never be better than this. <laughs> Music, cocktails, every opportunity to meet 
the man, the woman, whoever, who can be that special person. Conservatives believe in bringing people together. At Be It One, you can be your true, authentic self and have the time of your life. It's funny, it feels like a hostage video. <laughs> What did Suella Braverman do to upset people? Well, she made a, a sort of Home Secretary Plus speech of, of rabble-rousing mm -hmm. um, and um, used a lot of words like a hurricane of immigrants. But surely worse than rabble-rousing. Oh. I mean, what's she doing here? She stood on a dog's tail. She stood on a dog's tail? Yes. You can't do that. <laughs> A guy dog, and she's in heel. You see, they're genuinely shocked for the first time. Yes. Yeah, but, you know, that's what Suella Deville does, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Suella Braverman Would you like, and I would think carefully before you answer this question, to see Pretty Patel and Nigel Farage oh, enjoying themselves? Oh, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, brace yourselves, yeah, this is a very, tough we'll watch. We won't be able to unsee it. Okay. Here we go. All right. Yeah. It's not often you see a double Nazi salute, is it? You <laughs> <laughs> see one of those. Was that the Liz Truss event, the growth event? No, it's the GB News Disco. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Although they did go to Liz Truss's event, what was that called? I've learnt nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's make Britain grow again, that was um, called. Let's remove this growth. <laughs> <laughs> Has this woman no shame? <laughs> The conference did last longer than her premiership. So. <laughs> <laughs> but why is Nigel Farage there? What's he doing at the conference? What does it mean? Well, he's taken over the party. Some people say he's going to be leader. He's going to become... No. A... no. Leader of no, what? No, I well, can't it's the Conservative Party. He'll come in as leader. You're just trying to scare people late no. at night. <laughs> <laughs> it's the charisma. It's the sort of froggy charisma of the man. <laughs> but, no. This is what's being said. And I tell you what, some Conservatives are delighted because of his electoral attributes. How did this man, Gawain Towler, former UKIP aide, how did he explain Farage's appeal? Well, first of all, he was very annoyed because he was raised from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> this is the poster boy for Rishi's anti-smoking campaign, <laughs> right? This is what he's doing. It's quite the turn of phrase. He explained Nigel Farage's appeal. Brace yourselves. He told the Politico website, Nigel Farage has this unerring ability to touch the clitoris oh. of public opinion. <laughs> Can we get five buckets? <laughs> oh, my God. Let's cleanse our palates with thoughts of the Lib Dems. Of course, they had their conference last <laughs> week. Ed Davey has been working hard, as they often do, at his visual gag. Yes. Prepare yourself for some okay. excellent visual humour. Let's have a look. What's going to happen? <laughs> well, what's that? <laughs> it's like somebody's run over a cuckoo. What is that? <laughs> you see all that picture there with the curtains behind? It's a bit like somebody, oh, the doctor will see you now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Paul, of the great pantheon of silent comedians? Where would you put Ed Davey? <laughs> <laughs> Ninth. <laughs> This is the Tory party conference where Rishi Sunak announced scrapping HS2. Leader of the House of Commons Penny Mordaunt made an impassioned speech saying, stand up, stand up, stand up and fight, until an annoyed Rishi Sunak shouted, I am standing up. <laughs> Environment Secretary Therese Coffey has promised voters she'll do something about the mythical EU ban on bent bananas. <laughs> Though, if you believe Suella Braverman, a lot of the bananas coming here are just pretending to be bent. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Carol, take a look at this. Yeah. Oh, yes, this is the Speaker, Kevin McCarthy, and that's Matt Gates, the man who brought him down. 
don't know who that is. <laughs> um, so, yes, Kevin McCarthy was sacked as the Speaker, um, the first time it's ever happened in American history. And he only got the job in the end because he said that he would agree to a, uh, a clause that uh, anybody could get rid of him at a moment's notice, which they did. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible mess. They're even suggesting amongst themselves that maybe Donald Trump could be the new Speaker. He just needs to learn how to speak first. That's <laughs> it. But he lasted, I believe, 270 days yes. or thereabouts, which is about five and a half Liz Trusses. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. Long time. I'm glad we got you on for the maths, Carol, because I wouldn't have <laughs> been able to do that. And do you know, while they wait to find out who the new speaker is, who's doing it on a temporary basis, do you know? I don't know, no. no. Patrick T. McHenry, this is him. Yeah. Rather a fun-looking chap. He also came third in a Richard Curtis lookalike. <laughs> <laughs> And what was special about his first bang? Of oh, the he gave it a real wallop. Well, let's have a look. The chair declares the house in recess, subject to the call of the chair. <laughs> <laughs> what an well, the strengthometer of news. Exactly. Isn't it? That guy hates tables. <laughs> <laughs> Why did McCarthy's party turn on him? Well, because he supported um, Joe Biden's spending plan, I think. Here they are. These are the Republicans. Yes. It's like the worst ever Panini album. <laughs> <laughs> They're all Trump supporters. Yes. And it takes eight of them, basically, to derail the US. And all those people say, why don't we have a government system more like the US? Well, this. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned Matt... Gates, Gates, yes. Why doesn't he like McCarthy? I heard there was some personal animosity between the two of them, but I don't actually know why. There is speculation that it's because McCarthy wouldn't use his position of speaker to kill an ethics committee investigation. So, according to the New York Times, Gates is being investigated for sexual misconduct, illicit drug use, misuse of state identification records, misuse of campaign funds, accepting impermissible gifts and sharing inappropriate images or videos on the wow. house floor. Among other allegations. <laughs> <laughs> so if there wasn't enough. <laughs> Lie me. He's going to be the next president. Yeah. Isn't he? <laughs> As you say, the Republicans want to replace McCarthy with. They're floating the idea of Donald Trump, but I mean, it's not going to happen. He, he, he was given a new nickname last week. Do you know who gave him a new nickname? No. Chris Christie. Oh, yes, Chris Christie, yes, I know him. Yeah, he's got a real zinger that he's obviously been practicing. Shall we enjoy it? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Let's have a look. You're not here tonight because you're afraid of being on the stage and defending your record. You're ducking these things. And let me tell you what's going to happen. You keep doing that, no one up here is going to call you Donald Trump anymore. We're going to call you Donald Duck. <laughs> well, he's nearly right. He's nearly right. He's only one letter out, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's so pleased, he's so pleased. Yeah. But Trump himself, should we have a look at the kind of things he's been saying lately? Yes. Let's have a look. There has only been, listen to this, one such whale killed off the coast of South Carolina in the last 50 years. But on the other hand, their windmills are causing whales to die in numbers never seen before. Nobody does anything about that. They're washing up and show. I saw it this weekend, three of them came up. They wouldn't, you wouldn't see it once a year. Now they're coming up on a weekly basis. The windmills are driving them crazy. They're driving, <laughs> they're driving the whales, I think, a little batty. As always, hands all over the clitoris of public opinion. <laughs> <laughs> recently, recently heard this. He doesn't like it. You're assuming you'd be able to find that public opinion. <laughs> This is typical of the right wing, though. Like, Trump is saying that, you know, windmills are killing whales. Uh, and in the UK, the right wing is saying that the 20 miles per hour speed limit in Wales is killing whales. So, you know... <laughs> 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 and what about his latest court case? According to The Times, he's been accused of fraudulently gaining over a billion dollars on favourable business loans by vastly exaggerating the size yeah. of his properties. In one instance, he overestimated the size of a property by 200%. <laughs> and what defence... Well, you're a mathematician, Carol. How was this explained by Trump's lawyers? Uh... He's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, they explained, which I hadn't realised, the calculation of square footage is a subjective process. <laughs> <laughs> Who did Trump claim was on his side during the court case? The American people. More powerful even than the American people. God. Or Putin. Yeah, Jesus. Jesus? Jesus? Yes. Yes, let's have a look at the sketch, the court sketch. <laughs> 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 the, they're both Nepo babies, so it makes sense, OK? <laughs> the 
The Daily Mirror helpfully added, there are no confirmed reports indicating Jesus was actually <laughs> present in the court at the time. <laughs> the dangerous thing about the speaker class is it might be a problem for funding Ukraine. Should we check in with the Russian Minister of Defence, Sergei Shoigu, to see how the Russians feel it's going? We have an Air Force. <laughs> God, this is his pose when he's pushed out the window. <laughs> what key bit of kit did the UK recently send to Ukraine to be used in the war effort? Was it a sausage? No, but it is bendy. A bendy bus? Yes. Yeah. Three of London Luton Airport's bendy buses <laughs> on the Ukrainian front line. Here's one on location. <laughs> oh, I get the idea. It's to fool the Russians. They're heading the wrong way. Look, we're in Luton. We must go back that way again. Look. We're going to be in Ukraine. We've come the wrong way. <laughs> we'll be in Bedford before you know it. <laughs> Bus operator Go Ahead told The Telegraph these vehicles have done years of duty shuttling Luton Airport holidaymakers. So they're more than ready for life in a war zone. <laughs> 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 this is the historic voting out of US Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Despite a Republican attempt to block aid going to Ukraine, the US sent 1.1 million bullets to the country, which should make American schools slightly safer for a couple of days. <laughs> In case you're wondering, this is Donald Trump's business fraud trial. This is not the attempting to overturn the national election trial, nor the hush money to a porn star one, not the hiding state secrets one, or the abusing a journalist one, or the interference in the Georgia election one. It's his diary secretary I feel sorry for. <laughs> <laughs> so to round two, the picture spin quiz. Mm. Fingers on buzzers, teens. Mm. Paul and Carroll. Ah, oh, now this must be the uh, Spurs versus Liverpool game and the failure of VAR to correct a referee's mistake. And everybody's got very upset about it, particularly in Liverpool. But that's what it's about. Yeah, and I was furious. Were you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at the picture. Well, you can see in what's going on here, can't you? It appears to be football. Oh, yes. <laughs> see, oh, what I it is. <laughs> <laughs> this match was played during a partial eclipse of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Pictures in the dark. <laughs> the point is, you can see that he's onside, but the goal was given offside and it went to VAR yeah. and they upheld the decision and then realised their mistake but it was too late. And why did the VAR get it wrong? What are the theories? Out having a fag or something like that. <laughs> People have pointed out that the Ryder Cup was in play at the same time. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh. And they're wondering, well, of course, Episodes of Only Connect are also available at all times on iPlayer. We don't just <laughs> believe we're possibly watching something else. This is a theory. But we've actually got the audio yes. of the VAR yes. room. Mm. Uh -oh. Would you like to hear it? Yes, yes. Yeah. please. So 2D line on the VAR. Oh, check complete. Check complete. Check complete. It's fine. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Off. Thank you, mate. Thank you, mate. Wait, wait, wait. 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 On-field decision was offside. Are you are you happy with this? Yeah. Are you happy with this? Offside on field decision. Go. Yeah. That's, no, that's what it does. What? On-field decision oh. was offside. Are you happy with this yeah, image? Yeah, yeah, it's onside. The image we gave him is onside. Left back. He's played, he's yeah. gone off. <laughs> and it's an extraordinary high level of intellectual debate going on. I know you feel strongly about it, Ian. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> he supports royal engineers. <laughs> <laughs> and do they have to swear? They are being sponsored by... Um... <laughs> swear Fred 356. That's it. <laughs> with football, how did David Beckham make a timely intervention this week to correct a factual inaccuracy? Uh, they've just released a series about him on Netflix. He was in the documentary and we see him here giving Victoria the Paxman treatment. We're very working, working class. Be day. honest. I, I am being Be honest. honest. I am being what honest. What did your dr dad drive you to school in? So my dad did, no, one answer. my dad what well all right, it's not a simple answer what because car, what did you get your dad to drive? It to depends. No, 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 no. <laughs> In the eighties my dad had a Rolls Royce. <laughs> No, but to be fair, the chauffeur was working class. <laughs> 
speaking of sporting gaffes, where did a South Korean roller skater go wrong this week? South Korea. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, did he, what did he do? I saw this. It was in the paper. It was in the sports section and I just about to turn it over. <laughs> um, uh, they celebrated too early. They, they said, yeah, we've won and they hadn't. There's a real penalty. This is why I read this story. And because they didn't actually win, He's got to do national service. <laughs> absolutely incredible. He thought he was the winner, so he raised his arms, and then the Taiwanese rival was able to just outpip him. Huh? Look <gasps> at that foot. Yes, oh. it's there. Yes, and, and that is, you're absolutely right. I mean, this is according to the Telegraph. South Korean athletes, if they win an event, in an international competition, they're exempt from national duties. But by coming second, the whole team must now complete at least 18 months of military service. Oh. <laughs> but if they've still got the skates oh. and they've got to catch them first. <laughs> <laughs> this is the controversial VAR offside, which happened in the recent Tottenham and Liverpool game. It has to be said that Liverpool's disallowed goal did see a rare moment of unity among other Premier League managers who all agreed that the decision was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> In other sporting news, at the English Open Snooker Championships, China's Ding Junhui was penalised after playing in brown trousers rather than the required black. He did change from brown to black, but there was quite a delay as first he had to put on blue trousers <laughs> and then pink ones. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ian and Ignacio. Well, the COVID inquiry started again. Yes, oh. yeah. And what did we find out? Well, the two major science officers of this country said that this man was chaotic and an idiot, <laughs> uh, which shows you that science does work. <laughs> Bloody walk science, man. Yeah. <laughs> Just on the science, Patrick Vallance said no one in number 10 or the cabinet office had really read or taken the time to understand the science. I think Boris Johnson was quite engaged by the science. I mean, we, here's the BBC's Hugh Pym explaining uh, how Boris took the time to understand it. A document on long COVID had been circulating and it was said Mr Johnson had scrawled the word bollocks on it. <laughs> According to The Independent, messages going around Downing Street showed attacks on colleagues, with a paper adding a significant number were about Matt Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> and what's he doing at the moment? SAS, something to do with the SAS? Channel yes. 4 celebrity SAS, who dares wins? Yes. Right. But, of course, the, the former Special Forces instructors are taking no pleasure in the harsh treatment <laughs> they have to, to meet out. I mean, let's see the reluctance. That's part of the training, is it? There's a brilliant bit of Channel 4 continuity announcement in advance of the show. Let's yeah. Have a look at this. 16 recruits in an inhospitable landscape next tonight, though, as the country's favourite stars and Matt Hancock all take part in Celebrity SOS. He does right. general subject yes. inquiries and investigations. What have GB News been looking into? Uh, yes, so Lawrence Fox was on Dan Wooten's show mm -hmm. and he said some terrible things about a female journalist called Ava Evans. And then there were lots of complaints and then Lawrence Fox was sacked, but Dan Wooten, apparently there's an internal investigation into Dan Wooten. He's the most incompetent broadcaster because Lawrence Fox is saying this stuff and Dan Wooten is just sitting there giggling. He doesn't challenge it, he doesn't agree with it, he just he doesn't speak. Mm, he just thinks it's funny. More importantly, though, Carol, about yes. Lawrence Fox, would you shag him? <laughs> Sorry, is, is uh, Lawrence Fox not a Roald Dahl character? <laughs> no! See, I think I probably would, but that's no... <laughs> Gen X, a difference of opinion is no bar. Who wouldn't you shag then? Well, <laughs> not that I'm falling a queue or anything. 
GP News is obviously repitching itself as a serious news channel. Yes. And I think we could help them by showing one of the broadcast highlights of the summer. This is the news anchor Martin Daubney <laughs> reporting on the capture. Remember that prisoner, Daniel Khalife? And he was captured, and this is top-notch news reporting. Mm. But first, it's the news headlines. No, it's not. We're going straight to me. This is breaking news. It's fast happening. Because, as we just said, um, we, we, the, Apri the terror man... <laughs> it's here. Chip Chapman, uh, we have him coming up soon on the arrest of the terror suspect. He, has, he escaped from Wandsworth Prison and he's been apprehended. It's all coming up in GB News. We've got our first guest. <laughs> there is Prince of Escape of Arrested. Prisoner Daniel Kelly, beg your pardon, we're getting the autocomp in the right place. This story is just happening. Joining me now for the latest is GB News Home Security Editor Mark White. Are you there, Mark? <laughs> it's Chip Chapman. We have Chip Chapman army, um, for the Army Anger. Former head of counter terrorism, Major General Chip Chapman. Chip, dramatic breaking news. <laughs> I feel like we're watching him act out the VAR conversation for the little <laughs> people. You know, I don't think the mainstream media have got that much of a threat, do you? <laughs> this is the COVID inquiry, which has started to look into the inner workings of Number 10 during the pandemic. According to The Times, during the inquiry this week, it was revealed that Boris Johnson was nicknamed the shopping trolley because of his tendency to veer off in all directions. <laughs> <laughs> and because he wouldn't go anywhere until someone put money in. <laughs> That's very, very good. Yeah. <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Just one between you this week. Your four are Sir Patrick Stewart, US golf caddy Joe LaCarver, Perseus and Kim Jong-un. Paul and Carol. The second one along, he was the caddy that got into a bit of trouble with Roy McElroy. So they two had an argument in a car park. Um, so, that's him. You want to think about <laughs> exactly Perseus. what the caddy Perseus. was doing. Perseus, yeah. Perseus. Yes. He um, used a shield when he took off um, the Gorgon's head cos he couldn't look her direct in the eye. What else did he have? He had a, a helmet. Ripped abs. <laughs> I was thinking... Yeah. ..that the odd one out is the caddy yeah. because you wouldn't want to be related to any of the others because Kim Jong-un yeah. had his... A half brother oh, yeah. assassinated, and then <laughs> Perseus killed his granddad. Mm. Is that right? Perseus. Yes. Yeah. Who did Patrick Stewart murder? <laughs> Apparently, Jean Luc Picard, his entire family, burned in a house. You are completely wrong. Oh. So... <laughs> Good go, good go. Thank well, you want, to, you want to think about what exactly the caddy was doing. You say he was celebrating. Was he waving his hat around? Yes. Yes. Keep and going. And Perseus is waving around somebody's head. So, therefore, no. you can't wave around the hat and Patrick... What? What do you mean, no? Well... <laughs> Patrick Stewart, yeah. sir, sir... Sir Patrick Stewart, ..has yes. brought out a book in which he said he was bald... Yeah. ..from the age of 19. And, and therefore has... No hair. No hair. <laughs> and so... This is amazing revelation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think you better tell us. Just wearing it... hats. Yeah. It's to do with headgear, as I think you know. Yeah, yeah. Kim Jong-un is the odd one out. Yeah. Put yourself out of your misery there. Yeah. So, the golf caddy was waving a hat... Yeah. ..as a sort of rub down because the Americans wouldn't put their hats on as a sort of protest about not being paid, and the hat distracted... Roy McElroy. Patrick Stewart, according to his memoir, you're right, Carol, he would go into auditions wearing a wig... Yeah. ..and then whip it off halfway through to reveal his bald head to show they were getting two actors for the price of... <laughs> <laughs> not, not usually what a director means when they ask you to take your top off, but in that case, <laughs> that's what he did. So he got that advantage. Perseus, as you said, Ian, he had the helm of Hades... Yeah. ..to render himself invisible. So they all got an advantage over someone with the use of a hat... But Kim Jong-un received headgear... From in, Putin. ..in return for giving Russia an advantage. That's went the most Putin. convoluted and silly answer. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe we're still talking about this. <laughs> Fine. They all... they all got an advantage... Has this round been sponsored by Dignitas? <laughs> A 
When Kim Jong-un made his state visit to Russia, the North Korean leader was given a traditional Russian fur hat along with a rifle. I, I wish I had a bloody rifle, I tell you that. <laughs> with five bullets. <laughs> Later on, Putin asked him for all of the military hardware North Korea had, at which point he gave him the rifle back. <laughs> Kim Jong-un travelled from Pyongyang to Vladivostok, a journey that took 20 hours on a slow-moving train. I know exactly how he felt. <laughs> According to the Mirror, on-board catering included North Korean delicacies like donkey meat. Obviously, that has to be rationed. If you eat too many of them, there aren't enough left to pull the train. <laughs> Which means at the end of this... Hey! <laughs> Three points each. Three points each. Yeah, we're still there. Yeah. Oh, time now. That round made no time. difference to the scores whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication the British Origami Society magazine. Yeah, it's going to fold. <laughs> The bi-monthly publication devoted to the art of origami. Origami is Japanese from the words ori, time, and gami, waste of. <laughs> <laughs> and we start with 100 meter sprinter wins race after what? Running 100 meters. <laughs> after the runners fell drugs test. I'll take it. The answer is 100 meter sprinter wins race after all other competitors drop out when drugs officials <laughs> arrive. <laughs> Wow. This was wow. during the Delhi Championships. One competitor got a personal best of just under 10 seconds for the 100 metres. Not bad for a swimmer. <laughs> Next, what is the most fun you can have without getting arrested? Being a member of the royal family. <laughs> Create an origami depiction of the Parisian landscape circa 1925. Well, close enough. What? <laughs> the British Origami Convention in Milton Keynes is the most fun you can have without getting arrested. Right, right. One demonstration showed attendees how to make plankton origami. In other words, putting the paper through a shredder. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Bradford Council prepare for storm by what? Is it destroying Bradford before the storm could? <laughs> Changing bin day. I'll accept that, because it is about the bins. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Bradford Council prepare for storm by laying all the bins in Bradford on their sides. <laughs> laying it down on its side because wind is expected. I do that with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Next, scientists in Japan invent what to help workers what? Uh, scientists in Japan invent rubber pavements to help workers bounce to work. <laughs> Boing! It's almost the opposite. Scientists in Japan invent pillow to help workers sleep on the job. Here's the pillow invention. Oh. Oh. This brand new napping pillow will be on sale in Liverpool next week, just in time for Keir Starmer's speech. <laughs> next, man called what becomes bishop? Bishop. Correct. No, it is. Is it? Yeah, Mr oh. Bishop. <laughs> I thought it was Archie. Man called the make me a bishop hotline then <laughs> becomes bishop. The answer's already come up. <laughs> Is correct. Man called Mr. Bishop becomes Bishop. Mr. Bishop, see, not there. <laughs> <laughs> I'd call that, I'd call that more than a clue. That's more Bishop than a clue, Bishop. now. He won't be called Bishop Bishop. Will he not? No, he'll be called his first name. They're called Bishop Andrew. Or Bishop oh, yes, oh, yes, he will, Simon. won't he? Really... So my answer of, of Archie is interesting because <laughs> <laughs> he would then be called Archie Bishop Bish Archie. <laughs> yes. Anyway, I, I just bring it up as a. <laughs> After being consecrated in Thetford, the new bishop was visibly moved, presumably diagonally. <laughs> <laughs> Next, the editor of the British Origami Society admits that most of his folded animals, what? Are dead. <laughs> <laughs> are made out of paper. <laughs> are folded. <laughs> Have been put down. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> You're both close. It is to do with being dead, but I... Oh, I can't yeah. give it. The editor of the British Origami Society admits that most of his folded animals look like roadkill. <laughs> origami is still hugely popular in Japan, even more so now, because if your effort turns out to be weirdly misshapen, you can simply claim it's a creature from the beaches at Fukushima. <laughs> <laughs>
Dear Victoria, so you think that's an appropriate topic for the humour, <laughs> do you? There, I've saved you the trouble. <laughs> Nick Robinson asks the British Origami Society magazine, uh, what? Why do you bother? <laughs> How did you find out where I live? <laughs> Nick Robinson asked the British Origami Society magazine, are you planning to move away from your headquarters in Walsall because your car parking facilities there are rather limited? <laughs> if you move to Bishop Stortford, I can recommend an area which can take up to 15 cars, which includes three Morris Miners, two Volkswagens and a Jaguar. <laughs> Enough, no. 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 <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, I know this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick it, Robinson. Nick Robinson asked the British Origami Society magazine, Are you going to go digital and therefore be paperless? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just tell the editor to cut that? <laughs> <laughs> That's your best bit. <laughs> Nick Robinson takes the matter of origami seriously. Yeah, of course oh. he does. You should have been able to get this. Yeah. <laughs> Nick Robinson asks the British Origami Society magazine, what's the difference between a crease and a fold? Oh. Because I've been using the phrase crease and unfold, but I considered just saying crease because it's implicit in that word that you would also unfold. <laughs> and that's called a headline? <laughs> And finally, Sweden holds competition to find what? Any ugly people in Sweden. <laughs> Is it Norway? <laughs> Sweden holds competition to find ugliest lawn. Ah. According to the competition organiser, it is the cultural norm in Sweden to have a well-kept front lawn. Well, it certainly is in the films I've seen. <laughs> So the final scores are Ian and Ignacio have four, Paul and Carol have six. Oh, I'm really sorry. Sorry. Uh, You were actually right, Edward. Uh, <laughs> Before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. Ian oh. and Ignacio have this. Oh, look, there's the cost of living. <laughs> are they saying, oh, we wonder what happened to Epstein's jet? <laughs> Paul and Carol get this. Arts Council Cuts hits the London Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Ignacio Lopez, Paul Merton and Carol Vorderman. And I leave you with news that in Washington, to counter the claim that he has no successor, Joe Biden meets some of the young Democrats coming through. <laughs> <laughs> At the Tory conference, one staffer whispers to a colleague, don't look round, but apparently that nutter Liz Truss is here somewhere. <laughs> and as they tend to their first floor window box, an elderly couple spot their son and daughter-in-law coming up the drive. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs>